Welcome to Brotherhood. So that guy at the beginning of the video, well, that guy was me. Um, so I figured I'm gonna share a story with you guys about my journey with losing that weight, going from about 250 pounds, possibly heavier, to 150. So I'm gonna give you guys the story behind that. There will be a different video eventually that I'll go through um, how I lost the weight. So. First of all, I just want to say that weight on a scale really, in the grand scheme of things, does not matter. And honestly, it's a flex. It's one of my biggest accomplishments that I've ever done in my life. Alright, so now on to the story. I was born a big baby, and I always carried extra body fat in the young part of my life. But when I was a little, little kid, I just didn't care. I was my grandpa's gordito. I wanted to play music. I wanted to sing. I didn't care about athletics. I didn't care about sports. I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the athletics of it. I didn't enjoy watching any sports. Um, well, Diego introduced me to wrestling at a really young age. And I guess for me, I just needed the extra flair. I just thought that I would never be athletic. I let it go into me that I was never going to be an athlete. I was never going to have good balance. Um, and I put a lot of mental barriers throughout my life. The first one that I can think of as a kid is learning how to ride a bike. So yeah, I mean, to this day, I still don't know how to ride a bike. I've never really learned how to do it. I'm sure that I could, um, but it's just never really been something that I cared about. So middle school came around and that actually was pretty good for me because I was really good at guitar. So being a musician for me has just always helped out. It always will help out in social situations. And aside from music, as my older ex-girlfriend and the 35 to 45 year old audience that keeps popping up in our statistics would agree that I just click with people that are older than me. So if you're a cougar, wait, that's not what this video is for. Anyway, being in middle school, I got to hang out with the older crowd. This older crowd that I would hang out with, they were into skateboarding and that got me into wanting to skateboard. But I just never did it. That was another mental block. I just never learned how to skateboard. Um, but that time, see with the bike, I didn't care. But that time it was, it bothered me. I wanted to learn how to skate. I wanted to be able to do that. So I put that mental block that I'm not gonna be good at it. I'm just gonna fall off the board and hurt myself. What is the point of doing it? What is the point? I'm not gonna do it anyway. I'm not gonna be good at it anyway. So it's just mental barrier after mental barrier. That one still stuck with me. Um, so actually recently I bought a skateboard. You'll hear more about that soon. By the end of middle school, I was playing music and I started losing that body fat. Um, I even in, you know, by the time I was getting into high school, I went to the gym for the first time. I felt the rush of hitting a personal record. It was a squat, it was one rep, it was 155 pounds. Um, so I was super excited. Now, for me, that was the first time that athletically I actually did something um, that people were pumped for me about. Um, I didn't really get along with my high school gym coach very much, but he was so excited that I got that, and so was I. By the time I was a freshman in high school, I looked fit enough I played two instruments and I was in a mariachi. Now, I don't know where you're from, but in New Mexico, if you're a mariachi, well, it doesn't really matter, um, especially if you're in Albuquerque. But I was at a very confident point in my life. But as I kept moving forward in high school, I just stopped working out and I ate more. I was getting teased and I actually cared now, which was different for me. And fitness and exercise to me at that time, it was, it was something that was against me. Um, the people that would work out, they were against me. Working out as a whole was against me. So I just lost confidence. And I remember that was the time that I decided I'm gonna be fat for the rest of my life. And fast forward to college, I kept gaining more weight. So I went to college, I joined a fraternity, and I went to go get my music degree, which I do not recommend getting a music degree if you're a musician. You know, I found the fraternity 
and I found new guys that were willing to push me to limits that I'd never been pushed before in a good way. Um, for example, there were new nutritional habits and physical habits that they were teaching me. I was still mental blocking myself and it was ridiculous. So the summer before my freshman year of college, I had like a tennis elbow and I probably had healed by the time that I got into college and I started joining my fraternity. But when push-ups came around or anything with pushing, I had the tennis up. That's what my excuse was. And it was to the point where I wasn't lying just to those guys about it. I was lying to myself. Um, so while I was still in school, I rushed into a job at a local radio station and I was doing promotions. And eventually, I was cutting my first commercials. And then from there, I was actually on a uh, morning show so if you were driving in New Mexico between 2016 and 2017, maybe even a little bit of 2018, chances are you at least heard me in a commercial or you heard me on a morning show. It was just supposed to be a part-time job and I was supposed to be in college, but it was starting to sustain my living and I was able to work there and I felt, you know what? I'm just gonna leave college and I'm gonna stick to this because it, it's sustainable and I'm happy doing it. I wasn't happy studying. And in winter, if you work in promotions and radio, then that means that your job of going out places to promote is done. No places want you there while it's cold. Nobody wants to go to these events while it's cold. So that meant I wasn't actually getting work and I was broke. I was a broke college dropout who had a job technically but wasn't actually getting any hours. So all this eating out and bad habits that I created since I moved into the city for college just were put to a halt. You can't afford horrible food. You can't eat horrible food. And I started eating healthy. And just from that, I lost about my first 20 pounds. So I was, I remember I went to a gym, signed up for a gym, I remembered Hey, I hit a PR back when I was 15 as a freshman, so I'm gonna start going back to the gym and learning what I can do here. I went to the gym, and for the first time in years, I stepped on a scale. And this was already about 20 pounds lost, maybe more. And I saw the numbers 238. And I didn't think I was gonna be that big. I was thinking, ah, 210, 220. And you know the anxiety that you get before you check your bank account when you know you spent a little bit too much? It was like that. I didn't want to know how much I weighed, but finally I did. It was about two months into this fitness journey that I was put on because of poverty, and I just figured it out. I figured out I was 238 pounds, which that really sucked. Um, that was no fun. But at that point, I figured, well, I lost maybe 20 pounds. I lost whatever I lost at that time. I can keep losing weight. I'll get to 180, 190, something. So, kept working out. And uh, when I say working out, I mean cardio. I was afraid of doing weights. I saw big dudes at the gym doing weights and I just knew that I wasn't going to perform as well as them. So that held me back, mental barriers, mental blocks. I should have been working out the whole time. Since I started work, uh, going to the gym, since I checked and I was 238, it shouldn't have just been cardio. It should have been cardio and a little bit of weightlifting. Which is why I went from obese to skinny fat, rather than obese to buff, which is what I would have preferred to. Now people are starting to tell me, wow, you're on a fitness journey. But when I looked in the mirror, I still saw that 238 pound. I realized and I learned about this thing called body dysmorphia, which in the simplest, simplest terms basically means that when I look in the mirror, I see a dude that's a lot bigger than I actually am. Still to this day, I look so fat too. Um, so that's body dysmorphia and that's something that I suffer. So while everybody was telling me, oh, you're losing weight, you're looking good. Really, I wasn't seeing that. So I was getting disappointed. I was working harder with my cardio, doing crazier cardio, and I was hyper-focusing on that. And finally, I was below 200 pounds. Then 190, 180, 170. So I said, I am at my goal, and uh, I didn't really talk about the fitness journey. 
I posted on Facebook on my birthday, I lost this much weight. But at that point, I was hooked. There was no going back. So this was maybe about two years into my fitness journey. I got into the actual weightlifting and I started learning about it. I started learning about form and I started being very passionate about it. But I just wouldn't be able to get that nutrition 100% down and the habitual going to the gym three to five days a week, I just wasn't doing it yet. Um, I was doing enough to lose the weight, but I wasn't doing enough to get to exactly what my goal was. And I think for me, accountability is a big, big thing. So after my relationship ended and after I got to my new job that I'm at now, um, which was a new job then, now I've been here for a while, after all that, I got Diego into fitness. And that became something that we both loved. That was my opportunity to make the first suggested, suggested, not prescribed, workout plan for my brother. Um, which made me realize I like helping people lose weight. I like helping people with the journey that I went through. So here it is, March 2020. I had the girl of my dreams. Or so I thought, my therapist doesn't seem to think so. But I was playing music again. I was in the best shape of my life. My nutrition was perfect and I never skipped leg day. Okay, I skipped leg day a couple times. And then the gym's closed and 2020 happened. So that's where I'll end my story. But I have a new journey that I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna take you guys through. So I'm gonna get from where I'm at right now to a very respectable, good physique, better than where I was, and it's gonna be great. So, I know this vlog was a lot different from what you're used to seeing to us, but this is something that I've been wanting to go through with you guys, figured, you know what, this is the perfect opportunity. I know the video's a little long, I know it's different than you're used to, it's not gonna be full of comedy and a bunch of different things. Um, this is just me telling my story. So if you've made it this far in the video, then you might as well subscribe. And if you could give us a like, that would also be awesome. Um, also comment anything you want. But with all that being said, my name's Benjamin. This is Brother Earth. Thank you so much for watching.